500, 499, 498, 497, 496, 495. Good morning. Four, I was counting down. That's going to take forever. But. To say good morning. Good morning. I, I, I miss you mimicking me when I say that. Good morning. You didn't do it. I don't want to do it. Man, that's boring. Stop forcing me. I'm not forcing you. <laughs> All right. I'll do it when I want to do it. Oh. Make me. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday morning for you, Monday evening for us. My ponytail's all to the side like this. I feel like it's like... <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> no, it's not. So God bless you guys. <laughs> it's been a... It's supposed to be your day off. Usually Sunday. You know, after Sunday. The Monday. Yeah. But, uh... Well, duh. <laughs> no, but I'm of saying... you. it's Monday after Sunday. No, I'm saying usually after having service, we kind of try to relax on Mondays. You well, I mean, what? we did relax too. We had our whole day planned out, and I said we did I'm, none of it. I'm gonna stay home, and I'm gonna do this, and we have not been home all day. We said we were just gonna. We said even this morning we're just gonna. I had to take care of um, making all these phone calls to my doctors to do this, to do that. I made one phone call today. We took off supposedly to run one errand. And we got stuck doing all kinds of errands today. It's now 10 o'clock. And it's now 10 o'clock at night. And we literally just walked in the door. And I'm just like, we did nothing that we said we were going to do today. We've been really busy. And you know, but you know what the most beautiful part about today was, though? Can I share, can I share what, what, how beautiful? Go for it. Um, I don't know what you're saying, but go ahead. You know, we were um, at... We were in the parking lot uh, at by um, by one of the stores. Oh, uh, sending back the Amazon. Uh, yeah, Kohl's. yeah. He, uh, he was supposed to send back a package uh, uh, to Amazon, and we were in the parking lot and we were listening to a service, and it was just powerful. It was just so powerful and. And as we were listening to the worship, and it would just be, it just got more and more intense, and I just became broken in the parking lot, and I just started just saying, "Man, Jesus is coming," you know, and and I just I broke, and and my tears, I just couldn't stop my tears, and I just turned to David, and I was just like, I don't know, just. God just started to really, really move in that car today. And David just starts speaking in, in tongues and just it just starts praying. And man, we were having church in that in that hmm. parking lot. We were having church and, and you know, I'm sure there was cars parked around. I don't know if there was people around, but you know what, to be honest with you, I don't even care. But all I know is that there was there was things taking place in that car today. Um, but God was moving. And and I know and I feel in my heart, you know, that God's really doing something. And in not and not just um, and not just house arrest and not just in the lie in our lives. But I know he's going to start moving on the lives of 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 many people and so many people and and i feel that i feel like there's just a shift taking place in in the atmosphere you know like that song says the atmosphere is changing yeah. now and i feel like there's a shift taking place in the atmosphere and god is saying you know if if you're not if if one person isn't going to serve he's moving on to the next and to the next and to the next and he's going on to the next until the until he finds the one who wants to serve him and he's just he's just moving on to the next to the next and he's going on to everybody until that person is ready to serve him and he's just going to keep going and keep going until he finds the one that he impacts and the one that moves and and moves and moves and moves because we need to get a move on on things. 
in this world mm. right now. Well, just the whole thing started this morning because I saw the news about um, the leader of ISIS that on Saturday he was he was killed. Or he basically killed himself, but they found him. Uh, the U.S. forces found him, and uh, the president announced it on Sunday, but we saw the clip this morning when we woke up yeah. where he was announcing it. And... Um, you know, and, and talking about this, this this man's death, and I mean, the Bible says that it that, that God is never happy with anyone's death, but the Bible also says that he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. You know, and it's like I'm listening to this, and at first I'm just listening to it, you know, and I'm just like, wow, you know, they got this guy and leader of ISIS, and you know, good, you know, I mean, he's brought a lot of a lot of destruction. You know, and and then just my heart moved because I started thinking of the 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 Coptic uh, Christians that from Egypt that were working, and they I remember when they lined them up by the beach and beheaded all of them. Yeah. I remembered um, all the all the video footage of the Christians that they were beheading them and hanging their head on, on posts outside of the cities, and then I remember John Moore, who's a journalist, that we went to hear him, and he. We heard him personally talking about being in Syria, and they came up across a village. And well, we that, talked about that book. Yeah, yeah. And, and in that village, there was no children because ISIS, they couldn't kill the Christians. They couldn't stop it. So they said, what else? What can we do worse to them than behead them? Yeah. So what they did was lined up all their children, and each child, they, they told them to renounce Christ or die, and not one child renounced Christ. And they basically mutilated those children in front of the parents and they let the parents live because it's easy to decapitate them, decapitate them. So let's make it worse for them. Let's butcher their children and let them live with that the whole life. You know, so this whole village of adults, of Christian adults had no children, you know, and I remember um, he was saying that the children didn't scream, didn't yell. And they refused to renounce Jesus, and they they gave their little lives for Jesus, you know. And and all of those thoughts came to my head when I thought about this man that they finally caught. But, and, they, but he talked about how he went screaming down that tunnel and whimpering and, and crying. This grown man, this grown killer and murderer and rapist, was screaming. Yet little children didn't scream. The little children, as they were being butchered, didn't yell and didn't run. And they just and they didn't renounce Jesus. And as just as I'm hearing, as I was hearing, watching this, you know, this announcement, and all these thoughts of all these Christians, so many Christians that they lost their lives because they loved Jesus. You know, and it's like before I knew it, I had just tears running down my eyes because I'm like, Lord. I don't know, you know what I mean? It's just, um, I know there's more evil men, and I know there's, ISIS isn't stopped just because they kill the leader, you know? I'm sure they have different, a structure or whatnot, but still, the one that, that ordered those things, the one that called those things to happen, doesn't deserve to be on his earth. And he's gone. You know? And, and it just, uh, it's just a rush of emotions, you know? I remember when I first heard about what ISIS was doing, man, it was just, painful because the bible says that when one part of the body hurts all the body hurts yes and those whether they're christians in in, in the middle east or in asia or india or wherever christians are persecuted when they are hurt we are hurt because we're all the same body those are our brothers and those are our sisters and we might never meet them here on earth but we will spend eternity with them there will be a day when we will meet those children yeah we will meet those little babies that were mutilated. We will meet those Christians that refused to bow down to Islam. They refused and they would not renounce Jesus. We are going to meet those that were beheaded along the beach. We're going to meet them. And all along history, you know, so all of this came to my mind, you know, and it's like, I'm not, I'm not a crybaby. I'm not one to cry, you know, but just the thought of, of all those lives, you know, just... It was, it was a rush of emotion knowing that they caught this man and 
the fact that he ended up, it's crazy because he blew himself up. He died by the very device that he killed others with. Yes, and he killed his three of his children. Yeah, he killed three of his own little babies. You know, while our own president spared 11 of his children, you know. You know, it, it's it's just, you know, it's just amazing. Yeah. You know, but, um, you know, with that and, and, you know, throughout the day, we've been running errands for, for things, you know, of ministry. We've been running errands for things of our home and, and you know, catching up to some, some text and catching up to talking to some people and, and just catching up with so many little things. You know, a lot of the times we do want to take rest on Mondays, but un unfortunately it doesn't always necessarily work with like that. But in the midst of all of that, God it continues to work in our lives. And I think God um, sometimes stops us and says, hey, listen, um, I'm going to stop you in, in your tracks because I need to get a hold of you and he he got a hold of us all right you know he really did um because through all of this today i i believe that god was just showing us his power through everything that we got to see today and it just it had such an impact on us and he was able to show us like this is what's taking place. This is what I'm preparing your hearts for. This is what I'm preparing you guys for. Are you ready? And it was just tremendous. And man, I, I can't even begin to tell you. It wasn't just a, an emotional. It wasn't like, oh my God, it, I'm just being so emotional. It This was real. The feeling is so real because he's preparing us for something tremendous. And it's something that you, I just feel like it's uncontainable. Yeah. And, and I feel like, I just felt like I, when I was in that car and the praise and worship was on my I felt like I couldn't even contain myself. It was like, I, I felt like I almost needed to, to scream and, and, and praise and shout with, with, with everybody. But it, it just felt so good. And I feel like those those times are coming where it's it's gonna be uncontainable anymore. We shouldn't even have to hold back anymore. Yeah. You know, it's like what? Are, why are we containing ourselves? Why are we holding back any longer? You know, and I think a lot of the times we have been so suppressed, and 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 sometimes society has kept us so suppressed and so contained that I feel like we feel like we're in a little box sometimes yeah but it's like we shouldn't feel like that anymore I and, think, and god's saying no come out yeah. come out come out of those boxes yeah. i think for the last because i mean maybe somebody that's older could could would correct me and and i'm not i'm not exactly sure but i i grew up in a Christian home. So I remember hearing a lot of the pastors and evangelists at that time, and they spoke with such boldness. It was crazy. That's what I grew up with. But then we came into this, like after the Jimmy Swagger scandal and stuff that happened at that time, those of you know who that is, uh, maybe into the 90s and 2000s, it's like Christianity tried to become very politically correct and very fragile and careful you know and and that was a season maybe there was a season because i truly believe that god is still the leader of the church absolutely so for whatever reason it became very passive you know and, and, and um well i think more so now i think more well so no that built up to now but yeah. i think what is happening is the church is tired of being passive mm -hmm. and the church is tired of being politically correct and the church is tired of not yelling the name of Jesus out on the rooftops. And, and, and I think there's a shift happening. And now what's happening is there's some Christians or believers or leaders that say, no, 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 let's, let's stay passive. Let's stay quiet. No, let's stay muzzles coming politically off. correct. And, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening right now is some are saying, no, nah, we're sick and tired of this. We're going to proclaim Christ and that's it. And, and I see that shift you know, because, like I said, I'm 47 my mom became a Christian when I was five, so I've seen Christianity for 42 years, you know, and um, 
there's a shift happening, yeah. you know. So, um, I wanted to. Um, oh, really quick! I want to yeah. give a shout out to Anthony and Angel, oh, our yeah. youth leaders. Yeah, that was awesome. Our youth leaders today, for the first time, or yesterday, it, it was today for us, yesterday for y'all. Um, I'm really, really, really blessed and proud of our youth leaders. You know, they they started a a YouTube channel for um, the youth. And it's called House Arrest Riz Risen, Risen Youth uh, Channel. And they're going out and they're doing a, a one, one weekly uh, devotional uh, a week for the youth. Yeah. And that's so awesome because getting out there and now being able to reach the youth and reach our youth to start with, and then they're going to get out there and start reaching the youth. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited, you guys. If you guys can, please follow, subscribe our, our youth. If you have a youth, you know, um, have them follow our, our youth, you know, yeah. our youth channel. That would be awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, their first, it was their first video. Yeah. And, um, you know, so like, even Humble though... beginnings. Even though we started this 100 some videos ago, I mean, I've had this YouTube channel for years now, so it was a little different then, then Anthony and Angel getting in front of a camera. I, I commend them. I'm proud of them. It's going to get easier every single video that they do. And, you know, they've been trying to do this for the last few weeks. And, and we just gave them advice. Because they're, they're like, how do you guys do it? We're like, we try to do it. We keep trying. We keep messing up. They're all up. like, they're all stiff or whatever the yeah. first time. And we're and all like, no, just loosen up. And she's doing her little bobble they're, head. They're all like, <laughs> you know, how do you do it? You know, we kept messing up. I was like, you leave the mess ups in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you mean, it's like, um, and they're like, oh, and I'm like, I'm just being natural. Like, if I'm thirsty, I'm going to take a drink. If I mess up, I got to grab something. If I, you see, sometimes I forget what the heck I'm talking about. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. We're delirious, you know? <laughs> and, they, and then it's, I think it, it released them. It gave them freedom because they're yeah. like, oh, I don't know if they thought it was scripted or planned. I'm like, I ain't planning nothing other than hitting record. <laughs> You know, and you just allow the Holy Spirit to just speak. You know, it's so funny because um, one of the our our financial the the lady who takes care of our financial uh, at the church, you know, uh, little sister Tina, she goes, "Oh my God, sister!" She goes, uh, "I didn't realize Pastor was so funny." You know uh -huh. that that you had a sense of humor the way you did. Because you're, you know, you're so different at, at, at church sometimes. You're more serious, you know? I am serious. Oh, God. There he goes with the same thing. Babe, just quit it. Go you know? ahead. Stop it. Make my day. Oh, my God. Anyway, did Clint Eastwood say that? I don't know, babe. Oh. Was it Clint Eastwood or Charles? Clint Eastwood. Charles, Charles Manson? <laughs> Bron Charles no, Manson? Charles. Whatever. Oh, no, man. It's Clint Eastwood. Go ahead. Make my day. No, that's the salsa man. Who? The one this no, one made in no, New York City. That's something else. Okay, whatever. We've been talking for eighteen minutes, haven't said nothing. I what just do you realized. mean? What do you think we've been saying for eighteen minutes? What we've been <laughs> Huh? You hit the mic. So you, you just busted their ears if they're listening on headphones. Okay, wait a minute. So you think we've been just sitting here like statues? <laughs> <laughs> no. You know who, too, though? I, I also want to say this. So we've been like this. No, seriously. Come on. Oh, what? It's Brother Anthony. He has his channel, too. Yes. And he does teaching. Some of you guys follow his, too. You know? Um, so not only the youth with, with Angel and, and, and Anthony, but we have Brother Anthony, who he always comments on here. He has his channel that he does. He does his teachings. And I can't leave out Famous Gabe. Famous Gabe. Famous Gabe. I know uh, some of some of you um, have some other. Blah 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 blah. Some of you. Oh my God! I messed up. Is it Felix that has a channel? Yes. Brother Felix. Felix. Who's what was a sister that had a channel? Yolanda. Is it the one you yeah. told me has sister, a channel? A sister Yolanda. Yeah. Yes. We need to put all their little let let's let's put all their little uh, things up. <laughs> let's put all of their how do you put their links. channels links. all their channel links. 
So yeah. can we do that? So if, you, if, if you I get them for me, if I get them for you tomorrow, can we do that? So I'm going to search them all up, you guys, and I'm going to include them all tomorrow. So I'm going to include Yolanda's. Why, why not just put it on here? That's why. But tomorrow, not today, because it's already... I'm not going to sit there and look at, look them all up. It's because we're late. talking about it now, not tomorrow. So it just I'll talk makes about sense it again to tomorrow. put it on this one. Okay. I'm going to talk about it again tomorrow, and I'm going to put them all up tomorrow. We're going to talk about it for 20 minutes again tomorrow. No, I promise <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Now let's walk. Let's read. Read. Go. Read. Now. Let's do it. Do it. I want to. Um, the subject I wanted to talk about today was actually um, Satan. Satan himself. And, Satan. And what does scripture say about him? Satanas. And what, what, what was behind it? What was the whole thing in. Here's the thing, right? A lot of times people, you ask them, what's the worst sin that there is? It's cold in here. And um, it all comes down, a lot of people say, well, it was murder, it was this or that. And it's like, no, actually, the worst one, and actually the first sin ever committed, was pride. It's pride that leads to murder. It's pride that leads to hate. It's pride that leads to all these things, you know? It, 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 that leads to greed. It, it's pride. So when God created the, the angels of heaven, he made one the most beautiful of all. The most amazing angel that was ever created. He made that angel be over all the other angels. And this angel was actually the worship leader of heaven. He's the one that sang worships and praises to God. Matter of fact, God created him with instruments in his body. Wow. You know, and um, I don't know if some of you know this or don't know this, but scripture talks about this. And those are the scriptures that I wanted to go to um, first. Um, but I, I found a different one real quick, and then we're going to come back to this one. Okay. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. And then we'll come back to that one. Okay, Ezekiel. Yeah. Uh, Ezekiel 28. 28. Uh, we'll just start at verse 1. Uh, verse 2, I'm sorry. Okay. Check this out. Oh, wait, I have the Amplified Bible. I'm just going to read it like that. I think you're all bad now, huh? I know. <laughs> it says, Son of man says to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God. So the Lord God is saying this, right? He says, Because your heart was lifted up, as you have said and thought, I am a God. I sit in the seat of the gods in the heart of the seas. Yet you are only a man, weak, feeble, made of earth and not God. Though you imagine yourself to be more than mortal and think your mind is as wise as the mind of God. Behold, you are imagining yourself wiser than Daniel. There is no secret you think that is hidden from you with your own wisdom and with your own understanding. You know, anyways, it continues to go down. This is the part I want to get to, actually, in verse 11. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do all that because really the core of this is verse 11. Look what it says. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a dirge, a funeral poem to be sung for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you had the full measure of perfection and the finishing touch of completeness full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden. Man, there's only three things in Eden. Adam and Eve and the serpent. And the serpent. And it says you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold, the workmanship of your settings and your sockets was in you. They were prepared on the day that you were created. So he was made with the most precious of stones. And then verse 14, you were the anointed cherub. You know what cherub is? It's an angel. You are the anointed cherub who covers and protects. And I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire, sparkling jewels. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created 
until unrighteousness and evil were found in you. And through the abundance of your commerce, you were internally filled with lawless, lawlessness and violence, and you sinned. Therefore, I have cast you out as a profane and unholy thing from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub. From the midst of the stones of fire, your heart was proud and arrogant because of your beauty. You destroyed your wisdom for the sake of your splendor, and I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings that they might look at you. That's a lot of reading, but... Just from 11 uh, to From 19. 11, yeah. God's message came to me, son of man. Raise a funeral song over the king of Tyre. Tell him a message from God the master. You have everything going for you. You were in Eden, God's garden. You were dressed in splendor. Your robes studded with jewels. Carnelian, peridot, and moonstone. Beryl, onyx, and jasper. Sapphire, turquoise, and emerald. All in settings of engraved gold. A robe was prepared for you the same day you were created. You were the anointed cherub. A place, I placed you on the mountain of God. You strolled in magnificent, magnificent, ah, magnificence, magnificence. <laughs> among the stones of fire. From the day of your creation, you were sheer perfection. And then imperfection, evil, was detected in you. In much buying and selling, you turned violent and sinned. I threw you disgraced off the mountain of God. I threw you out, you, the anointed angel, Sheriff. No more strolling among, among the gems of fire for you. Your beauty went, went to your head. You corrupted wisdom by using it to get worldly fame. I threw you to the ground, sent you sprawling before an audience of kings and let them gloat over your demise. By sin after sin after sin, by your corrupt ways of doing business. You defiled your holy places of worship. Mm -hmm. So I set a fire around and within you. It burned you up. I reduced you to ashes. All anyone sees now when they look for you is ashes, a pitiful mound of ashes. All who once knew you now throw up in their hands. Whoa. Throw up their hands. Throw up their hands. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'll now throw up their hands. This can't have happened. This has happened. Okay. So it's talking about this angel that was there in Eden that was so beautiful, was in the place of worship, had instruments on him or in him or created out of him or whatever. And everybody knew he was the most beautiful. And all of a sudden he's kicked out. There's only one that we know that that happened to. Yeah. You know, so now I want to go to Isaiah and then we're going to talk about it. Isaiah 14, 12. Alrighty. And I'll start reading. Check this out. It says, how are you, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the earth, of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an, ab an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thus through, thrust through with the sword who go down to the stones of the pit all right <clears throat> 12 to 12 to uh 19 okay what a come down this O babylon day star son of dawn flat on your face in the underworld mud you famous for flattening nations you say to yourself i'll climb to heaven 
I'll set my throne over the stars of God. I'll run the assembly of angels that meets on sacred Mount Zaphon. I'll climb to the top of the clouds. I'll take over as king of the universe. But you didn't make it, did you? Instead of climbing up, you came down. Down with the underground dead, down by the abyss of the pit. People will stare and muse. Can this be the one who terrorized earth and its kingdoms? Turned earth to a moonscape, wasted its cities? Shut up his prisoners to a living death? Others king get a decent burial, honored with eulogies and placed in a tomb. But you're dumped in a ditch unburied, like a stray dog or cat. Covered with rotting bodies, murdered and indigent corpses. Your body desecrated, mutilated, no state funeral for you. You've left your land in ruins, left a legacy of massacre. The progeny of your evil life will never be named oblivion. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty heavy. Do you know why Satan hates when you worship? According to scripture, he was a worship leader. You're not even in screen. Mm -hmm. He was a worship leader. If somebody's a worship leader in heaven and God created you to be that, don't you think he'd have an amazing voice? Absolutely. I think Satan has a voice like no, no other. Yeah. I think every famous singer that's ever existed can't even touch the voice of Satan. I, I believe that because everything God creates is perfect. And if he created him to be his worship leader, I imagine his voice is amazing. He was created to lead all. Yet, because of his pride, because he wanted to be like God, he's thrown out, thrown out of the, thrown off the worship team, thrown out of the throne of God, thrown out of heaven where God says, I don't want to hear you anymore. And then come along, little old us. Some of us sing better than others. You know, Sharon sings amazing. I sing horrible. You know, there's people that sing amazing. That, you know, people we know have beautiful voices. There's some people we know that have horrible voices. But nothing compared to Satan. But yet we worship us uh, sinners. Us humans that were made out of the dust of the ground. Amen. And we worship and we get God's attention. Can you imagine how angry that makes him? Mm -hmm. He's like, are you serious? You want to listen to them? You want to listen to them mm -hmm. instead of me? I was made perfect. I was the most beautiful. I, I have instruments in me. And you're going to listen to them work the enemy, Matt? Start to worship. Hmm. See, the battles are won in worship. Yes. Battles are won in praise. Because it is there. Like sometimes people say, man, I, I feel like there's something evil in my house. Or I feel like something, you know, I need somebody to come pray. I need to sit. Man, start to start worship. Start to worship. Because what happens, man, is you start to clean house. I truly believe that when you begin to worship with all your heart and praise with all your heart, I believe that the angels of heaven begin to worship with you yes. because they're seeking one who will worship in spirit and in truth because their worship leader who they followed has been fallen because of pride. Amen. So all of a sudden, when they see somebody that's humble, somebody that loves God, somebody that says, man, I, I, Lord, I, I probably have the worst voice of anybody in heaven, but I'm going to give my voice unto you. I truly believe that angels hear that and they see God. They're like, who's worshiping me? And I believe all of the heaven, angels of heaven begin to sing along with you. Amen. I believe that yes. because something begins to happen. You know, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Yes. You know, and, and it's just a beautiful thing. That's why when somebody exalts themselves, who are you acting like? When somebody thinks themselves better than others, who are you acting like? Yeah. When somebody wants to be the one at the top, who are you acting like? When somebody wants to be 
just the, the, the one that everybody looks at. Who are you acting like? Do we really need to read Ezekiel and Isaiah all over again? Hmm. So here's the thing. You're like, Lord, let me always be humble. Lord, let me always be broken unto you. Lord, humble. yes, Lord, I want to yes. serve you, Lord God. I want to worship you. I don't want to be like Lucifer. I don't want to be like that. Only you should be exalted, Lord God. Only you should be on the throne. I, I can't even, you know, like, like um, the prophet says, Lord, when I'm in your presence, I feel like I'm in a man with unclean lips. Like I shouldn't even speak because you're so holy. I shouldn't even speak. You know, and it's like that is what God is looking for. He is seeking somebody to worship him in yes. spirit and in truth. Yes, in all humility. I don't ever want to go and be in God's presence and in and, and, and him deny me or spit me out in any way, you know, because of my pride or because I, you know, never acknowledged, yeah. you know, because I turned my back. I, I never want to, I never even want to think of that. Like, look how God talks about him. He says, you were the most beautiful. Yeah. But that doesn't mean nothing to him. That doesn't mean nothing to God. I don't want him to pass me up and be like, you know, I'm just going to go on to the next person because... You know, you don't want to worship me in true heart and spirit. So let me just move on to the next person who's going to worship me in true heart and spirit. So let me move on to somebody who's really going to worship me. Yeah. You know, I don't want that to happen. It's like, here I am, Lord. I want to worship you. I need to worship you. I just don't want to. I need to. I need to worship you. And it's, and it's not even just singers, guys. It's it's everything. This is no, this is the one thing we're it, talking about. But even even when I but, but worship isn't just about singing. Exactly. Though. Exactly. It's worship is not singing. Worship, praise, and worship is not singing. It's it's it it's more than that. It's a cry out to God. It's 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 where your your heart stands with god it's where your relationship stands with him yeah. it's where how you thank him how you acknowledge him how you seek him is where where is your heart with why him why is the cat here oh my god she scared me come here kitty okay sorry we're back. Sorry about that. We had to put the cat away, guys, because or not, she's going to be jumping around everywhere. Yeah. Like everywhere. So this isn't just worship. This isn't everything like I was saying. If you're arrogant enough to think that it is your business, that's a, you know, and you start to self-exalt yourself, you got to give God the glory for everything. Because we never want to be in that spirit of Satan. Amen. Pride. Amen. Pride, you know, and, and and that's an ugly sin because pride turns into everything else, you know, and, and it's like you always want to approach the Lord humble because you realize that the fact that you're breathing right now is because God allowing he's allowing you to breathe because people say, well, God didn't do nothing. I worked hard for this. Well, who gave you the air so you can breathe, so you can work? Who gave you the energy and the strength for your legs and your eyes to, who gave you sight? Who gave you hearing? Yeah. It's all God. Amen. You know, God can humble somebody or exalt somebody, but just because he exalts somebody doesn't mean you exalt yourself. You know, you know what? What pride does and what all of that does to others, if, if you're a saved person and you still have this pride, what it does to, you know, God's children and others, it isolates and, and it hurts others. Yeah. And we're not called to hurt others. You know, we're supposed to be um, sharpening one another and we're supposed to be encouraging one another and strengthening one another for God's kingdom. 
And if we walk around with pride and if we walk around with all of that, what happens is that we're walking around and we're pretty much tearing down one another and we're destroying and we're hurting and we're causing people to isolate. We're causing um, people to, 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 you know, keep themselves isolated in, in not being able to flourish or not, you know, becoming or coming into what God has called them to be because of who wants to, here's what happens. Here's what I know, what, 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 what's happened in, from what I've seen is that people look at Christians and they're like, well, if that's what a Christian is, why do I want to, why do I want to be a Christian? Yeah. You know, why do I want to get saved or why do I want to get close to God? And why do I want to continue my walk if that's what a Christian is all about? You know, and, and it's sad because that's not what Christianity is about. That's not what a follower of Christ is about. We don't live like that. And so we need to be very, very careful that that's not what we're, that's not what we're exemplifying. You know, it's, it's hard, yeah. you know, so we got to be really, really careful with what we do. We don't, we don't destroy others by, by that ugliness of pride. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I mean, and that goes for everything, not just worship, just life, yeah. preaching, teaching, you know, once you start thinking that all of this is, is the world doesn't revolve around you. The world doesn't revolve around me. No. The world revolves around God. Yes. And that's it, plain and simple. And through him, through him everything is possible and everything is, is, uh, everything is possible yeah. through him. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so <laughs> now that we described, you know, the things of the enemy and the things that God said about the enemy, we always want to be the opposite of that. You know, because he thought himself greater than what he actually was. And God was like, no, nah, I'm sorry. I share my glory with no one. Yeah. You know, and so guys, I don't know if you got something out of this. I felt like we said a lot of things, but I think we said a lot of good things. Amen. <laughs> you know, Amen. so um, God bless you. Have a great, amazing, blessed day. Yes. Amen. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.